In 10 years of Skyrim modding, I've been fascinated with just how many mods there are out there that aim to enhance very specific parts of the game. So today, we're going to delve into one of my personal favourite playstyles and focus on mods around vampires. And in this video, we're going to work on overhauling each aspect of our vampire playthrough in order to offer you a magnitude of content that will keep you engaged across your blood-sucking adventures. So ready your fangs because we're going to delve into some of the best and most underrated vampiric mods to have ever been conjured up. From the large gothic themed castles and underground burrows that will act as the player's outpost, to a magnitude of bloodlusty weaponry and armour to craft, find and equip as you go, all the small things like the undead appearance of you and your other sanguine cursed comrades. Today we're going to cover it all, in the gothic most bloodthirsty way possible. This video is sponsored by Conqueror's Blade, a free-to-play tactical MMO available to download via Steam and the My Game Store, and specifically its new update Helheim launching for free today on June 9th, adds a whole new season of content inspired by Viking Raiders with two new units, new reworked maps, armour, and a whole new battle pass. In Conqueror's Blade, you take command of your own medieval siege unit, with the goal to out-tactic up to 15 other players' defences. You can create your own hero, specialise in 10 plus units, unique weapon classes and command over 85 melee, ranged and cavalry units inspired by history's greatest armies. And you can even create or join houses to ally with friends or other players. Conqueror's Blade also releases brand new content on a regular basis with free updates and seasons which are limited time events where you can carry out challenges to earn exclusive content like units, cosmetics, emotes and more. And their premium program gives a 30% boost to earned hero and unit XP, bronze coins and armor honor and lets players receive more vault keys from the completion of weekly quests. Master your fate and lead the vikings to new lands in Conqueror's Blade Helheim, now available as a free update. And sign up and play for free to receive a free viking unit with 7 days of premium time using my link which will be in the description and pinned comment of this video. A huge thanks to Conqueror's Blade for helping support the channel and without further ado, let's get into the video. So to start this vampire overhaul, we'll begin by taking a look at the main vampiric system itself and the powers that come along with it. And for this video, in order to give you as much compatibility with other aspects of your game, we're beginning with a mod to enhance what Bethesda already created. Scion, a vampire overhaul, is a mod which covers a whole plethora of vampire abilities and statistics in order to basically flesh out the systems that were already introduced into Skyrim, but in a more complete and balanced way. So we'll start with your mortal vampiric form. Sunlight is now a key player in your day to night cycle, lowering your health, magicka and stamina and stagnating their regenerations. And in mortal form, the player also has changes to their weaknesses and resistances, with additional bonuses to your sneak detection statistic, and your sneak attacks. But now for your vampiric powers, such as your Hunter's Sight, which can be used to scout out your prey in the dead of night. In addition to this, you also have the Embrace of Shadows to cloak yourself in a shrouded invisible mist. But when stealth is no longer an option, unleash the Reign of Terror ability to cause enemies to flee at your sight. And that's just a taste of your many abilities, but your strength grows even greater under your primal form. As a Vampire Lord, your stats now justify the transformation and loss of armour that comes with turning into your Beast Race. Powers also include the deadly Vampiric Grip and other more advanced spells become unlocked as you progress through the skill trees. And because there is so much tweaking to the whole Vampiric system that comes along with this mod, 
I'll just put a big list of everything this mod actually covers on screen now, so if you really want to see the details you can pause and read through. But the short answer to Scion is it keeps to the vanilla style, but enhances it in pretty much every aspect, to make it so you never want to revert back to the systems that were there before. And now we have a good base overhaul which enhances our vampire abilities in a fitting and compatible way. It's time to begin to turn our attention to other aspects of a vampire playthrough, by starting with the very appearance of our and other NPC vampires. We'll begin this section by taking a look at a mod which overhauls the appearance of all the vampires in Skyrim to make them fit more seamlessly into the game world, and Cosmetic Vampire Overhaul aims to do just that, by making all vampires look less like weird gremlin goblins, and more, well, <gasps> cosmetic. Bringing the look closer to your original character with more subtle tweaks to identify that an NPC is an undead creature of the night. This mod does also change the eyes to be this deep blue void, but can also be switched to vanilla. Or you can install another mod like Ruby Red Eyes to overwrite it. But now let's change the appearance of the Vampire Lord. With Supreme Vampire Lords, and you can also retexture it if you so choose. And finally it's an additional replacer which changes the whole model to be more horror inspired. Next are some smaller mods to enhance some of the items you'll be seeing a lot, like Vampire Coffins 4K and Dusty Vampire Dust. Next is enhanced blood textures to bring more visual fidelity to the blood in the game, and this also generally makes everything a little more gruesome. Next is actually a font mod by the name of Sanguis, which replaces any instance of text in the game with an Oblivion styled font, and this is included in order to pair with our next mod. Vampire Nightmares, which reintroduces the fabled vampire themed wake up messages that we all know so well from Oblivion. Next is a couple of vampire themed armor sets, starting with the ancient vampire armor, to add a robed blood sorcerer build. Alternatively, the Volkahar Vampire Knight is a heavy armor addition to the Volkahar arsenal, and you can also use the Lord of Cold Harbor mod to further your gothic themed armaments. Next is the Lustmord armor, which resembles a more mysterious, shadowy figure set, and the deadly Knight of Molag Ball armor, which also comes with a bunch of new weapons. First is the Knight of Molag Ball axe, a double bladed weapon with a gargoyle statuette carved out of the head of the axe. The mod also introduces the Mace of Molag Ball, a spiked blunt weapon designed to inflict as much pain as possible to your enemy, in a savage and cruel form. The Sword of Molag Ball follows a similar style upon the hilt and guard, while also adorning a blood red blade which is designed to enhance any blood that might drip down it. Next in a different style is the Knight of Molag Ball Greatsword a Slave Knight Gale type blade which is severed at the end, making it an interesting broken weapon. The Knight of Molag Ball Shortsword on the other hand, resembles the Longsword but in a smaller one handed dagger type blade. Additional items can also be acquired like the Knight of Molag Ball Shield which is carved with the deathly gothic metal engraving, with the face of the Daedric Lord. Next, straying away to other mods is the Ori Harkon Sword Replacer, which changes the model of Harkon Sword to be an interesting unique to Jagged Blade. And you can get a selection of items that have a similar design by using the Netherlight set which comes with a bunch of gothic themed weaponry matching its style. And as far as both the armour and weapons and all the other additions of the appearance of the items you'll be seeing a lot throughout your playthrough, it's time to start to move on to some of the areas you might want to encounter while dealing death under your fanged fatal. So without further ado, let's look at some interesting location mods. Skyrim is well known for its huge amount of locations and relatively large number of player homes available in each city and guild, but even throughout all of those, the player is left with pretty much only one option if you're roleplaying a vampire character in Castle Volkahar. So in this segment we're going to explore a number of new locations which will act as permanent or temporary player homes for your character, and the first mod, even if not your home, will just serve as some great exploration and world building. Unique Vampire Dens is a mod which adds special hideouts hidden underneath each major city. First is the Riften Den, an area specifically designed for the thief type vampire characters, located fittingly in the main Riften Ratway and featuring a small hideaway to lay low for a time. Alternatively, over in Windhelm, its den is inhabited by a more lively bunch, 
as its underground tavern is designed for vampiric Norse to celebrate their unholiness. In Solitude, however, is a different story. A study hall where only those of higher rank and stature can reside. And a similar story can be told with the other major cities, such as Markarth, with obviously a Dwemer themed hideaway, Whiterun deep within its dead filled catacombs, and Ravenrock with its Dunmer worshippers. But while the underground dens are all nice and hidden, we can turn our gaze to a more grand encounter located deep within a new thorned forest world space, where you'll find the hidden fortress of Raven Castle. Inside you'll find a number of beautiful gothic themed rooms and hallways, where you can be the lord of your own ginormous dark fantasy keep overlooking a large number of new NPCs, workers, traders and even prisoners or vampiric cattle. But while living in the royalty of your own castle is enthralling, we should take a look at something more private. The Crypt of the Old Guard is a player home designed after the original Dawn Guard that were corrupted by the power that they were sworn to fight against and were then tainted to become creatures of the night themselves. And this player home reflects just that, a secret hideaway cave which was used by the old Dawn Guard during that time, which comes with every supply and station you could require. And finally is a mod by the name of Spiderwick Manor, a bigger on the inside player home which provides you with a sizeable dawnguard starred fort, castle and house thing, which can be taken over by yourself and used to plan your adventures from within. Coming with pretty much every room you could require across your playthrough, even a swimming pool if you so desire. And with all these mods installed, you have plenty of choice on areas to claim for your own vampiric journey. But there's still one last new location mod which we need to discuss in order to fully complete this video and it aims to add a whole new secret city. Coldhaven is a ginormous mod which aims to add a huge secret underground city into Skyrim. Along with a city's worth of NPCs, it provides a place where you as a vampire can fully embrace your dark tendencies without having to hide your true nature. And one of the best most intriguing parts about this mod is the city comes fit with a bunch of secrets to discover and quests to partake upon. And of course, being a city, a multitude of new buildings to explore and traders to barter with and really adds a place where vampires can truly feel like they have an area hidden away from the rest of Skyrim, where they can retreat to when the burning light of the sun rises in the overworld, and provides you with hours and hours of playtime for a playthrough long location and quest to partake upon your vampiric journey. And that's going to be everything for this video. I'm trying to get more videos out more regularly for you guys so I hope you enjoyed this one and others soon to come. But some quick mentions before we finish. If you haven't already joined the Discord server the link is always in the description or on my homepage banner, you can help suggest mods for videos such as these or just hang out or get modding help from the community. And also if you'd like to support the channel then the links to the Patreon will also be down below where I'm currently in the process of writing up my entire mod list guide. But with all that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.